Hello everybody, this is Derek Winkworth from Aptra, also known as CloudToad on Twitter, and today we're going to give you a very quick demonstration of the kinds of things you can do with the APIs we've exposed in version 1.2 of the Aptra operating system, or AOS. So let's get started. As a network engineer, I have been in the situation where I've wondered, you know, in between two endpoints of the network, how much bandwidth is available along the path paths in the network between those two endpoints. And what we are looking at here in in AOS version 1.2 is an experimental feature called our headroom feature, which gives you exactly that kind of information. And you're looking at a network that has two racks, uh, excuse me, two leaf nodes and two spine nodes and the links in between them and how much bandwidth is available on each link. This graph is updated live as uh, consumption of the network changes over time. And, what, and this is a real network that we're looking at uh, right now. And I have over this network a traffic generation tool called MGen, which is generating traffic flows uh, or inserting different kinds of traffic flows at different times um, so that you can see the graph changing over time. When you hover over, um, a particular link it tells you how much bandwidth uh, you have left and here it's we can see this uh, is down in the red at this moment with 4.9 gig left or now zero left um, and you know if it's yellow you know it's you're kind of running out of bandwidth if it's red you know you're you're that's not good um, that link's running out of bandwidth of course blue means you're more or less in the clear and that's the general idea um, this is something that uh, while it is an experimental feature in AOS um, end users if they're so inclined can actually make this kind of thing using the APIs um, that we've exposed in, in version 1.2 and so so how do you do that how do we get to there well um, let's have a look so here um, by the way this headroom uh, demo is running on an actual AOS server and we're going to the main page here um, we have a, a network deployed called Headroom, and as we can see, we have no anomalies here. That's that's what this service statuses uh, page means. So we'll look at the actual network uh, topology of the network, and we can see the two spines and the two racks, uh, two leaf nodes in the racks. And if we click on the racks themselves down here, uh, we can see on the right hand side that there's three servers uh, in each rack. And that's what the traffic generator is actually uh, sending traffic. Um, we're running those, the generator on those servers, and the traffic is passing uh, in between them. So what does AOS know about the network? Well, everything AOS knows about the network is modeled inside of a graph in memory. And you can actually look at this graph um, from um, the AOS dashboard page. Uh, after clicking dashboard and going over, you'll see there's a couple of icons, a GraphQL uh, API Explorer, which we'll talk about in a minute, and a Graphinator uh, icon. If you click the Graphinator icon, this pops up. It's a, it's a visualization of the information graph of the network with different kinds of nodes uh, represented by different colors and, of course, different edges that, uh, that interconnect those nodes. If we hover over this node, we see that it is spine 1, um, and if we follow the edge down to the next node, we see that it's orange, which is an interface node. And this is Ethernet 4 slash 1 on spine 1. And we can see we're running eBGP over this link. We can follow this all the way down to this other orange node. It's Ethernet 2 slash 2, and it belongs to Rack 2, uh, the Rack 2 leaf node. So basically what this is showing is that Ethernet 4.1 of Spine 1 is connected to Ethernet 2.2 of Rack 2. And all of the information about the network is actually modeled um, inside, of this, inside of this graph. So how do you get to this information? Well, you can actually do uh, a GraphQL query. And that's what we're going to look at next. When you click on the GraphQL Explorer, this page pops up. On the left-hand side, you can craft a graph query on the right hand side you get the results in this case we're just bringing up a list of uh, switches in the network and the links um, uh, on those switches and the and the names of the nodes on the other end of the links uh, that they're attached to so how do you get 
from this information to something like this headroom demo? Well, uh, it's really two pro two steps. Um, first, you have to figure out what how you want to query uh, the graph model so you can um, you know get the nodes and the edges back uh, that that you need in order to get the information you want. Um, and second, you need to get the, uh, the, the telemetry associated with those nodes. Um, we're not going to show you uh, uh, the telemetry piece right now. We have a 20-minute webinar coming up on June 21st um, that goes into a lot more detail about how to how to do that with several different demos. Uh, and then again, um, and during Cisco Live, you can stop by our booth. We'll be doing uh, live demos of the various APIs uh, we've exposed. Um, setting up telemetry and doing graph queries and things of that nature. But essentially, uh, what you can do with this is, for instance, you can pull up all of the paths between two endpoints, like we discussed earlier, um, of the network. And then based on those results, you can um, create a visualization like this. And then using telemetry information associated with the nodes returned from that query, you can actually, uh, you know, do this color coding, uh, color and size encoding of the bandwidth in between these nodes. Um, that's a little bit longer than I wanted to go, but uh, if you want to, again, if you want to know more, um, please sign up for our webinar on June 21st, and please uh, come by our booth uh, in Las Vegas at Cisco Live um, coming up here uh, the week of June 25th. Thanks very much.